service. Today, we are continuing our Find It Challenge. Kids, you're going to be looking for this symbol all throughout the service, a heart. You have until 11.30 to send me your guesses of how many you counted. At 12 o'clock, I will do a name draw between all the kids who got the correct answer, and the winner will win a gift card for the dairy. So keep your eyes peeled, it starts now. This is our call to worship. My call today is a call for focus, a call for our minds to be set on him, our call to try to push everything aside, a call to not just listen to what's on the screen, but to respond to what God is saying to us, a call not to watch singing, but to let our hearts be moved in worship a call to be more than just spectators in our house, but a call to purpose, a call to quiet our hearts and listen to what the Spirit of God would say to us today. That is our call. This is not online church. This is the church. We are the church. And today as your pastor, I call you to worship, to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the one who has called us out of the grave. That is our call to worship today. As Julian and Denis lead us in this part of the service, let us call out to him and worship.
mighty, so much stronger. King of glory, King above all kings. Shakes the whole earth, holy thunder, leaves us breathless on wonder. King of glory, King above all kings. Welcome to church. My name is Alex and I am the summer student for Mighty Kids this summer. If you would like to connect with us, you can reach us through the connection card that is up in the description of this video. And if you need prayer this morning, you can reach us at pray at bucktoastchurch.com and we would love to pray for you. This past week, we continued our food program and we served over 200 meals. How exciting is that? It's such a great way uh, to minister and reach our community in a practical way that is helpful in this specific season. Up next, Pastor Troy is going to be giving us an update about how we can continue to give in this season. I just want to take a moment today to talk about giving. If you've been watching our online services, today's the 13th one, you'll know that not one single time have we talked about giving. We've actually done that on purpose. We know that many people believe that the church just wants their money. But at Grace Church, that is not true. We are actually here to serve you. This message isn't for you today. If you don't call Grace Church home, or if you are not a regular attender, if you're a guest this morning, we're so glad 
that you're here. This next one minute is actually for people that call Grace Church home. I just want to remind you of the importance of being faithful in your tithes and your offerings. It helps us to continue on the mission that Jesus has called us to. And we need you to be faithful. We need to be faithful. So you can continue to give. If you haven't given up to this point, we really need you to start and continue to give. And you can do that in three ways. On the screen right now, there is a number. You can actually text to that number. Just go into your texting program, put that number in, put the amount, and it will actually walk you through the process. Or you can actually give through email at give at bucktooshchurch.com. You can actually see that on the screen right now. Or lastly, you can go to our website, www.bucktooshchurch.com, and you can actually give there. See, this money isn't about bills. This money is about reaching the community, not just with food, but with programs and love and faith and hope. So Grace Church, I ask you to continue to give to be faithful with what God has given you. Every Sunday between 1 and 3 p.m., someone will be at the church. If you can't text to give or if you can't give online, someone will be there to receive your donation. Grace Church, be faithful to what God has called us to in a time that I know is tough, but God has always been faithful. So please remember to continue to give from what God has already given to us. Bow your heads with me as I pray over the service this morning. Dear God, we're so thankful for the opportunity to be able to meet in our homes. And we just pray that you will use this sermon to stir something new in our hearts. God, we know that you are present even um, when we're facing difficult times or uncertain times, God, and we pray that you would remind us of your love and how much you love us personally this morning. We thank you for who you are and all that you do, and we pray over the service in your name. Next, Pastor Troy and Pat are going to be talking a little bit about about Pat's favorite story in the Bible. Join us as we watch. Well, I'm here with my friend, and I just want to give him a chance to Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your family. My name is Patrick Cormier. I'm Martin Joanne's son. Um, I'm married to Michelle. Uh, we've been married almost seven years now. We have a little girl, Annette. She is one and a half. And another little one on the way due end of July. So the family is expanding. We just recently moved back to New Brunswick. Therefore, I am building a house for us. Um, so that's what I'm, my big project for this, this spring. That's amazing. I've been here all day helping Pat because I'm very handy. Okay, I haven't been here helping him. But it's so good to be here. And so why don't you just tell us a little bit about your faith journey, uh, whether, you know, how it started or a memorable part in your faith journey. Why don't you share with us so we can get to know you? So I grew up in a Christian home, a big family with uh, wonderful parents. Uh, I grew up going to church. I, when I was 16 years old, we started going to Grace Church in Bookdush. And that first summer we went to Camp Evangeline. And I think that's the first time that I really got it. Like, like I really felt God touch me and reach me. And so that was kind of a, a transition point in my faith journey, if you will, where it became more, it didn't just become, this is what mom and dad believe in, but this is what I believe in. So that was really a big, big stepping stone in my faith journey. That's awesome. So in our Fab Five series, we're talking about my favorite uh, influential stories in my life. But part of that series, we're talking to somebody different every week about a part of the Bible or a story in the Bible or even just a theme in the Bible as something that's really stood out to them. So Pat, what is your favorite part, theme, scripture? What is What stands out to you? 
Trying to narrow it down is some hard. There's so many wonderful things. Um, when you asked me that question, I thought about it a little bit and the first question, the first story, I guess, that came to mind is the story of the Apostle Paul, how he went from being an enemy of the church, basically ordering Christians to be killed, and then in a moment on the road to Damascus, Jesus reached him and completely changed him in a moment. Like it didn't take months, it didn't take years, but in a moment, he went from being an enemy to being one of the founding pillars, if you will, of today's church and our scriptures. And so I just find that story so amazing. I think even Paul wrote in his letter to Tim Timothy, I think, he wrote, um, you know, Christ came to save sinners of whom I'm the worst. He basically mm. says, if God can reach me, he can reach anybody. And not only did God reach him, but he reached him like that. It's just amazing how powerful God is. And I think we can apply that power today. Like nobody's ever out of reach for God. I think that's what I really get out of it is don't lose your faith. Don't, you know, stop praying or believing that somebody's going to come to know Christ because his power is unmatched. It's unmeasurable and it reaches, it can reach anybody. Mm. That's amazing. And the truth is, if we're really honest, there's a little bit of that Paul previous in all of us. Mm. You know, we might, might not be killing Christians, but we were an enemy. And it's amazing what God can do in a moment. Mm. And I think that that's something that we always have to remember. What God can do in a moment, it doesn't matter where you are or where you've been today. God loves you. And he wants to encounter you like he did me, like he did Paul, and like he did you. Why don't you tell us what your favorite thing is about Grace Church? So we've been moving around the last seven or eight years. So we've had a chance to be part of other churches. Um, and the way that Grace Church stands out is the community, the even church community outside of the church build, the church building with the church walls it's uh you know you have a friend you can lean on a friend that can pray for you or come help you with something it's just an amazing family atmosphere that uh it's just i think makes grace church stand out from from other churches really. anyway that's amazing well as pat mentioned we're here He's building a house literally with his bare hands. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to just take a moment. And I'm sure we'll do this again more formally as the days go. But this house is the house that you're going to raise your family in. You're going to bring a new baby home. And uh, I just want to pray for you and for Michelle mm -hmm. and right now. Let me pray. Dear God, I thank you for this family. I thank you for their love for you, their dedication to your church and their surrender in their hearts to you as their savior. God, I pray that this house would not just be a building, that this house would be a home, that it would be a place of community, not just as a family, but as a church, that people would gather. And when anybody walks into this house, they would know that there's something different about this place, that it would be a house of peace, a house of grace, and that everyone that enters and leaves will know that they spend time in the presence of the Lord. In your name, amen. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond the
Five series. This has been such a meaningful series as I've 
learned and grow again through these things that have been so impactful in my life. We've talked about sacrifice, talked about compassion. Last week, we talked about our worth. And these stories, I hope they've been impactful to you because these stories not only in the past have shaped me, but again, have shaped me moving forward in my life. So today's week four of our series, it's a series called Fab Five, where we were just going to talk about five messages or five um, stories in the Bible or scriptures that have been influential in my life. So today's week number four. And I have a really special friend that is coming to read the scripture to you today. Mark 2, verses 1 to 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they could not get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. I mean, what a great story. And just a quick review we have some friends that they want to bring their friend to Jesus, but their friend can't walk. So they are trying to find a way to Jesus, but Jesus is in, I don't know what kind of building, but he's in a building. And we're just in my garage today. But Jesus is in the building, but it's so crowded with people. But they know that they need to bring their friend to him. Somehow from his reputation or for what he has done in the past, what they've heard about him, they know that Jesus is the answer for their friend. So I'm assuming that they try to get in the doors, they try to get in all the different ways that they can, but they couldn't get in. So they make a decision. And this decision is something that actually has shaped my life and my ministry. I remember this story from when I was a little boy, going to Sunday school. And they make a decision that they're going to bring their friend to Jesus no matter what. So they do something phenomenal. They actually take him as a paralytic and they actually take him onto the roof. And they actually tear a hole in the roof and they actually lower their friend to Jesus. I mean, just think about that. And the thing in that story that's always stood out to me is that we as Christians, we've lost our urgency or the importance of bringing people to Jesus. We won't even invite people who don't know Jesus to church. But we've lost that feeling of urgency. I mean, most of you watching this, you won't know my father-in-law, but my father-in-law is a very quiet guy, 
Uh, we've gone on lots of long drives where we didn't talk too much. We've, we've done whole rounds of golf where we didn't talk too much, but he's such a great guy. And I remember this one time we were on a trip and I was in the back seat and I needed to go to the bathroom. Have you ever been like that? Where you're just like, I need to go to the bathroom. I need to go. And it feels so urgent. And I remember that I kept saying, Dave, stop at the next stop, stop at the next stop. And he would go and he would drive past the exit. And then I would see him in the front kind of just laugh and everybody in the vehicle would laugh. I wasn't laughing. And then at one point he drove into a building and he was going to stop. And then he pulled out and kept going. Everybody in the vehicle thought this was hilarious. But the closer I got to the bathroom, the more urgent the situation became. Finally, he stops at this one place. I get out and I go to the door and the door is locked. I mean, things hit an all-time urgency. It felt like the closer I got, the more urgent I felt. Finally, I got back in the vehicle and Dave finally stopped and let me go to the bathroom. You say, Troy, what does that have to do with this? I think we need to understand that proximity breeds urgency. That it should breed this urgency in us. That the closer we are to people, we should feel more urgent that they come to know Jesus. Proximity breeds urgency. I hope that you'll tuck that away in your heart. When I think about the idea of these, these men, these friends bringing their, their friend to Jesus, they had an urgency because they were his friend. They were close to him. So they had proximity, which moved them to urgency. I realize that in today's day and age, that a lot of things have changed. There's a lot of different things that we, as the church, need to break through. The truth is, if you're watching this today and you go to church, some of these things are going to resonate with you. But here's the truth. If you're watching this and you don't go to church, and you have been gathering with us online, these things will resonate with you too, but for different reasons. As a church, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, there's things that we need to break through in order to help people come to Jesus. The truth is there's lots of stereotypes about Christians. That they're judgmental, that they're unforgiving, and the truth is, we need to be, as Christians, people who are willing to break through those stereotypes. But the only way to do that is to be in relationship with people and be kind to them. Christians often have these stereotypes because they're true. I mean, that, that causes me to pause and it causes me to take an insight into my own life. But Christians can be judgmental. But we need to be able to break through that if we want our family and our friends to know Jesus. We need to break through apathy. You say, what's apathy? Apathy is just not caring. And the truth is, Christians have started, as, as in the Western culture, as time as goes on, we've lost our passion to see people come to know Jesus. I mean, church is interrupted in person and a lot of Christians can't even be bothered to watch online because we've become apathetic. Well, if it's not my way, if I don't get what I want, then I don't care. When we need to break through apathy in our own life, where we 
spend all of our days not caring about people who don't know Jesus yet. There's a line in a song that says, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. That's the opposite of apathy. We need to break through our limitations. Here's the truth. I cannot change anyone. That is my limitation. Only Jesus changes people. And these men in this story, these friends, they knew that. They broke through the roof to bring their friend to the only one who could change him. We need to break through our selfishness. I mean, we don't like to admit we're selfish, but the truth is all sin can be broken down to selfishness. We need to break through our comfort zones. We all like to do things how we like to do them and we like to get comfortable. Amelie said it a few weeks ago, but real growth and real change doesn't happen when we're comfortable. It happens when we're uncomfortable. And here's the truth about this season of church. This is a season. It's been 13 weeks and you can get complacent and you can feel like you're comfortable or you can grow. We need to break through and out of our comfort zones. Now we're going to touch on something today that maybe when I talk about it, you're going to just put your hands up and say, no, that doesn't apply. This is something that I think the church doesn't talk about enough. And it's in the forefront of our culture right now. It's prejudice and racism. And here's the thing. If we are gonna be the people who God has called us to be, every bit of prejudice and racism in our heart needs to be broken through and brought to light. I know that you wanna fight back right now and you wanna say, Troy, I'm not prejudiced or I'm not racist. But I want you to do me a favor over the next few moments. I want you to really ask God to search your heart. Listen, I'm not here to say that you're a racist. I'm here to say that there's prejudice in every heart and prejudice moves us to racism. I mean, I've seen people just this week, just this week online, refer to people from Quebec because uh, somebody traveled to Quebec refer to people from Quebec as queer Beckers. What's that? I mean, if we dig to it a little deeper, if we're really honest with ourselves, people in Kent County, they don't really like people from Quebec. I mean, that's hard, but that's prejudice. I mean, when you think about First Nations people, what are your thoughts? The truth is, if we're really honest, some have prejudiced thoughts, maybe racist. I mean, there was a, what's your attitude towards immigrants or foreign workers? I mean, I hope today that you hear what I'm saying, that if we're going to reach people with the gospel of Jesus, we need to allow him to dig out these things in our heart. If we're going to break through and bring people to Jesus. We've all heard the story of the doctor in Camelton. I mean, now there's other parts of the story that came out. That maybe it wasn't as reckless as everybody thought it was. And I've watched online as people have called for violence towards him, have said, send him back to where he came from. Even to the point of some people said, let's lynch him. As a culture, as a people, 
We should be ashamed of that in our heart. No, I, I know that it's not everybody. But I'm asking everybody, including me, to search our heart today. Who God has called us to be. And we are going to break through what God has called us to break through. Whether that's a roof or a stereotype, or apathy, or limitations, or selfishness, or a comfort zone, or prejudice, or racism. We are gonna to have to expose our heart to him. Because a Christ follower, you have been called to break through. I have been called to break through. So I encourage you today, I'm gonna do something a little different. We're gonna play a video here in a moment. There's no words to this video. It's just an old hymn that someone is playing with the words. See, there's many times in my life that I've had to pray the prayer of this song. Search me, O oh God. In the Bible, it says, search me, O God, see if there's any wicked way in me. Today, I'm asking you to search me. What is holding me back from breaking through? What do I need to break through to be who you've called me to be? So here's what I ask. To quiet your heart and to listen to this song. Just follow the words and let God speak to you today. Why don't we listen together?
in closing, when I think about the story of these friends, use your imagination. They're just about to pick up their friend and bring him to the roof. Can you imagine bending down and picking up the corner of that blanket? Can you imagine the weight they would have felt of a full grown man? This is what I'm asking for all of us. I'm asking that you'll feel the weight of this moment. Search me, O oh God. See if there is any wicked way in me. God, what is holding me back from being urgent, for taking responsibility for my own actions? If we're going to see people come to Christ, we need to look inside first. See, before we break through the roof for our friends and our family, we need to let God break through our heart today. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. And see if there is any wicked way in me. Let me pray. Dear God, I pray that you would help us today. That I know that this is tough message to listen to. But the only way that we're going to be people who will break through the noise is if we let you search our heart and dig out every not good thing. You have called us to be urgent, to lead people to you. The story says that the friend's faith made a difference in this man's life. God, help us to be people who will break through. In your name, amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, kids, the hunt is over. Your parents have until 11.30 to send me your guests. Tune in on my Facebook Live at 12 o'clock. Good luck.